In this clip, we see Azon bombs heading towards a bridge in Burma. Each bomb is controlled by a joystick from its B-24 mothership. The Azon bomb is considered the first U.S.-deployed radio-guided bomb. The intent of this video is to deep-dive review Azon bomb characteristics, targets, tactics, lessons learned, and combat effectiveness. At the end of this discussion, we will review rare combat footage of Azon bomb attacks. This page provides an overview of the Azon project from a 1993 Maxwell Air Force Base School of Advanced Studies report titled The Long Road to Desert Storm and Beyond, The Development of Precision Guided Bombs. The Air Force prioritized less complex, durable bomb designs to meet theater introduction time goals. The VB-1, or Azon Guided Bomb, is needed to destroy targets like bridges, roads, and rail lines, where saturation bombing was not proving effective. The bomb will be steered in azimuth only, hence the name Azon. The bomb is a officially the VB-1, where VB is vertical bomb. The VB-1 is constructed by attaching a radio control tail fin on a standard AN-M65 1,000-pound class general purpose bomb. The tail unit incorporates gyroscopes and ailerons to keep it from rotating while in free fall. The unit has a flare and smoke system so the bomb can easily be seen and steered towards a target by a joystick in the release mothership bomber. The bombs were carried within the B-17 or B-24's internal bomb racks. Azons increase bombing accuracy, however, as we shall see, only under specific combat conditions. This page from a declassified 1945 United States Naval Bomb Disposal Unit document outlines characteristics of the Azon bomb. The bomb is 73 inches in length, 19 inches in diameter, and the bomb's casing wall thickness equates to half an inch. The 1,000-pound class bomb contains 558 pounds of a TNT explosive fill. The bomb is detonated by the nose fuse set for instantaneous or small time delay, depending on the target. The bombardier will release the Azon bomb by sighting the target visually with the Norden bomb sight. The bomb incorporates a tail rudder, which limits the bomb's movement in azimuth or deflection direction. Once released, the bombardier will steer the bomb to the target with a joystick. The tail unit also incorporates gyroscopes, which control the tail's ailerons. Aileron movement will keep the bomb from spinning and maintain the rudders in a vertical orientation. The tail unit contains a 1 million candle power flare to ease in visual bomb tracking during its controlled gravity fall. The flare is located here. This image shows the bomb's azimuth or deflection boundaries from a 1946 Air Material Command document titled Graphic Survey of Radio and Radar Equipment. For an azon released from an altitude of 15,000 feet, the bombardier can joystick steer the bomb within a deflection distance range of 2,600 feet right or left. There is no control in range. A follow-on VB-3 or Razon is a two-axis guided bomb that could be controlled in both azimuth and range was in development but did not see service during World War II. One significant feature of the Razon is it takes two bombardiers to control the bomb. One controls the bomb in range, one in azimuth. The Azon's tail unit's components flare, anti-rotation ailerons, bomb controlling azimuth rudder, and antenna. Additional characteristics of the Azon bomb are shown on this page from a 1964 U.S. Army Human Engineering Laboratories document titled The Accuracy of the Azon Guided Bomb as Affected by Battle Conditions in World War II. The rudder will recenter if not receiving any commands. Full 15-degree rudder travel is obtained in 0.7 seconds. At this full rudder deflection, the bomb will respond by yawing up to 12 degrees. The Azon's tail unit is self-correcting, keeping the unit from spinning and the rudder in the vertical orientation. One aileron surface moves up, one down. By moving the joystick side to side will command a rudder reaction. The rudder surfaces move together. The bombardier tracks the Azon with his Mark I unaided eyeball. The bomb is released with the Norton bombsight. The bombsight's trail is set slightly longer to account for the bomb's slightly increased drag that occurs from steering the bomb. He just keeps tweaking the bomb's direction of flight along the target line. That's it. Small bomber maneuvers are okay within limits. He must maintain visual eye contact with the bomb and target at all times. As on strike accuracy is based on the bombardier's skill, training, and experience. This sketch outlines bomb trajectories of a normal M65 bomb and the M65 with the Azon tail assembly attached from release to strike. The bombs are dropped at an altitude of 20,000 feet by Norton bombsite visual release. The normal bomb starts spinning and follows this predictable, repeatable path. It will contact the ground in 36.6 seconds. Due to bomb imperfections, there will be some azimuth and range errors. The Azon bomb will not spin during its fall. It will be subject to azimuth path corrections, the bomb's tracking line during these azimuth course corrections. These corrections will cause it to fall short at this location. The bomb's azimuth error will be much smaller than a normal bomb, but its range error will be larger.
since the Azon bomb strike will both fall short, an elliptical error pattern is expected. Azon targets should be long and narrow like bridges, docks, marshalling yards, and runways, as discussed on this page from a March 1945 intelligence document titled Impact. Azon operator training takes about a week after six to eight practice drops. The joystick control box is shaded here and components of the tail assembly here. This image shows the systems a bomber will need to adopt to interface with the Azon bomb. This includes a transmitter, joystick, dynamotor, and external antenna which is mounted here. The weight of the system is 50 pounds. This image shows an overhead path of an Azon bomb from a 20,000 foot altitude release. The target is located here. The bombardier makes a left joystick correction around 25 seconds after release to get the bomb back on target track. The bomb overshoots the target line. The bombardier makes a smaller right joystick correction, and so on until bombs strike. Since the bomb's response is sluggish, operators tend to over control it. They need to anticipate and account for the bomb's overshoot. So how combat effective were Azon bombs when deployed in the Mediterranean, European, or Burma theaters? It varied from very successful to worse results in normal bombs. In order for the mothership to visually guide the bombs effectively, they require clear weather, easily identifiable long targets, and have achieved air superiority including targets lightly defended by flat guns. Air crews considered Azon missions more dangerous than conventional bombing missions. The bomber must maintain course and speed after Azon release so the bombardier can track and guide the bomb to the target. Good visibility goes both ways though. Ground gunners can sight and attack the bomber more easily. Good Azon targets are likely heavily defended. At first, the Air Force brass resisted deploying Azon bombs as discussed in this 1993 document titled Military Transformation as a Competitive Systemic Process. The National Defense Research Council responded accusing them of prioritizing bomb tonnage dropped rather than target destruction. Studies showed Azon bombing to be 15 times more effective than conventional bombing. Channel commentary. This value is strongly dependent on bombing conditions, target selected, and crew training. They were first deployed from bombers out of Italy and then from the UK. As on missions flown from these theaters were generally not successful. Good weather is required for tracking the bomb's tail flare, which is infrequent in these theaters. Black and fighter attacks tend to cause the bomber to take evasive action while the bombardier was tracking the bomb. This page from an August 1944 15th Air Force's theater memo provides a rationale for recommending discontinuing the Azon project. The document's key points include 316 Azon bombs were dropped over 14 missions. In three of the 14 missions, the bombs were released singly, where each Azon is controlled by a bombardier. In two missions, multiple Azon bombs were released, where only one had a flare, but all responded to a single joystick command. On six missions, Azons were released from a three-plane element, where one Azon had a flare, but all Azons responded to the lead plane's joystick commands. Average release altitude was 15,000 feet. When released individually, the deflection error distance from the bomb strike point to the target was 605 feet and the range error was 1600 feet. This compares to conventional bombing errors of 780 feet in deflection and 950 feet in range. Multiple Azon bomb release errors were 702 feet in deflection and 1400 feet in range. For reference, under control test stateside conditions, the expected Azon errors were 33 feet in deflection and 216 feet in range. We can now tabulate and evaluate this data. The significant direction to evaluate is deflection as the range is of secondary importance for long thin targets. The Azon bombing deflection error is only around 22% better than normal bombing at 605 feet versus 780 feet and 68% worse in the range direction at 1600 feet versus 950 feet. The program stateside deflection accuracy benefit of 33 feet was not attained in combat conditions. The small increase in deflection accuracy over normal bombing did not justify continuation of the program. The combat results of Azons deployed in the European theaters 8th and 9th Air Forces is described in this October 1944 Headquarters 8th Air Force document titled Report on Azon Operations. Key points of the evaluation include Targets were attacked with Azon guided bombs during 13 missions. They were found to be satisfactory if deployed under ideal conditions. Clear weather is critical to mission success. This is usually not the case in Europe. Crews state of alert to take advantage of clear weather caused morale issues. Normal bombing results proved just as effective as Azon bombing results. Based on weather and bombing results, it is recommended that Azon bombing be discontinued in this theater. 
Azons were deployed in the Burma theater by the 10th Air Forces as weather is better, Japanese enemy opposition is lighter, and better targeting like this long, narrow bridge. Notice the axis of attack is along the bridge where the Azon range errors are not that significant. This map shows the Burma theater zones and the number of Japanese fighter per area as of April 1945 from a 10th Air Forces April 1945 weekly intelligence summary. The first mission occurred in December 1944. It was considered a success. B-24s attacked a bridge that had been bombed multiple times over a two-year period without scoring any hits. Three B-24s made three passes, each dropping a single Azon during each pass. They destroyed the bridge. Three days later, four B-24s carrying seven Azons each destroyed two bridges in four passes, dropping 16 Azons. The four B-24s attacked and destroyed another bridge on their route back to base with eight of the remaining 12 Azons. Another bridge was destroyed as it was struck by three Azon bombs of the four dropped. The 15-day initial Burma scorecard out of the 127 Azons dropped was 14 bridges were destroyed, one probable, and two possible. Azon system link failure flare failures accounted for 2% of bombs dropped. This page describes Burma Azon bombing tactics. The Burma theater targets are well suited for Azon bombing. Best results if bombing altitude is between 8 and 10,000 feet. This is sufficient time for steering the bomb and will minimize range errors. At this altitude, the Azon's time of fall is around 24 seconds. Azons were dropped individually, which is much more accurate than cluster releases. Each bomb would behave slightly differently to the joystick inputs. This affects overall strike accuracy of the Azon cluster. A 5 mil trail correction needs to be applied to the Norton bomb site, otherwise the bombs will fall short. Nose fuse time delay setting is based on target. The Azon dud rate is around 6%. A group of officers indicated that if enemy opposition was heavier, bombing results would be much poorer. The next significant factor that affects Azon accuracy is the undercast level. A cloud cover at or greater than three-tenths will cause the bombardier to struggle in maintaining Azon visual contact during its fall. Equipment failures occurred in 3% of the releases. Half were flare failures and half were joystick to rudder system malfunction. Surface winds did not affect Azon control. During the period from December 27, 1944 through March 3, 1945, the 10th Air Forces dropped 459 Azons, destroying 27 bridges with an average range error of 201 feet and deflection error of 131 feet. 10 to 15 percent of the bombs struck their target. Azons had an additional unforeseen benefit. Overall, non-Azon bombing accuracy increased due to bomber crews wanting to show that they were just as capable and accurate as the Azon crews deploying the new precision whiz-bang guided bomb. We can update the Azon bombing error table to include a row representing the Burma bombing results. Burma bombing Azon deflection strike errors are around six times less than normal bombing errors at 131 versus 780 feet. The Burma range accuracy levels were better than stateside values at 201 versus 216 feet. This page summarizes and recaps the combat effectiveness of the World War II Azon program. Combat results were mixed, with bomb accuracy close to stateside evaluation to very poor. Results from the Burma theater were best. This is due to lack of effective enemy opposition, a special Azon observer was in the crew, and targets were well suited for an Azon attack. The channel can add more favorable weather conditions. 8th Air Force's Azon results varied from equal to stateside to much worse. Some bombs were released as inaccurate clusters and crew morale suffered as discussed earlier. Results of the 15th Air Forces were far worse. Azon bombing accuracy was around the same as normal unguided bomb accuracy. This film documents the first 15 days of Azon deployments in the Burma theater. I edited the film to keep the text up for 3 seconds. Stop the video within this 3 second window if you wish to read the annotations. Couple things to notice in the attack clips. The bomb's time of fall is roughly 28 seconds. Altitude of release is around 10,000 feet. The bombs are striking along the bridge's axis. Tracking the bomb's 1 million candle power flare and residual smoke does not seem to be an issue. The bomb's weaving trailing smoke indicates the bombs were deflecting an azimuth during their descent.